you kind of energize the body a little bit, but with that focus on um, self-confidence and willpower. That's quite a nice one, isn't it? Maybe we need a little bit of the willpower to keep going through the crazy times that we're continuing to live in. So Linga Mudra, um, you have your fingers interlaced, but when you're interlacing your fingers, you want to have your left hand as the hand that's higher up, okay? So that your, um, your left index finger is the one that sits on the top of all of your fingers. The reason for that is you're going to kind of create a double fist and then interlay, uh, sorry, link up your thumb tip and your index finger of your left hand into a circle and then your thumb, your right thumb sticks up in that circle, okay? So when you first come to this mudra, there's a bit of a temptation to grip like crazy, but have it have it quite loose and soft. So when we're um, when we're using mudras, it's great to have obviously the shape of the mudra and intention that you're going to hold the mudra with a level of um, um, precision. But the precision needs to give way a little bit for comfort. So you want to find some ease and some kindness to your hands, your fingers, your wrists and so on. OK, so it's always that little balance when we think about the philosophy and and, you know, being kind to yourself, but then also being focused on what it is that you're doing, which is holding Linga Mudra. And the place that you're going to hold it is just in front of your tummy button. So when you're sitting, and you can sit in any way that you want to. If you're going to sit cross legs, don't sit on your sandwich box or your um, shoe box because that will not work. But you can fold up a cushion, a blanket. You can sit on something to help you sit cross legs. And you've got your linga mudra, and it's just somewhere in front of your tummy. You a little bit lower down. All depends on body proportions where that arm goes. Remembering as well that one of the places that you can sit and you can make a bolster out of a whole load of different things, a pile of books with a cushion on top. You can sit straddling a bolster and just be a little bit kind of higher up as well if you want to. Okay. So you come into a sitting position where you can hold Linga Mudra, okay? And maybe that's the point where you want to close your eyes and let yourself arrive and notice. So as you come to your sitting position, holding your hands in Linga Mudra, notice how your sitting position feels. So if your knees are hovering up and they feel like you're, you're kind of working hard at holding your knees up, I'll just show you what you can do. The next is how you can have, you can sit yourself on mute, and you can have the cushions just tucked underneath your legs. And that allows your knees to soften and let go. Brilliant. And then decide where you want your arms. What we want to be able to do when we're sitting is to find that sitting place where your pelvis um, is either ever so slightly tilted forwards or that sense that it might be tilted forwards a little bit. 
but probably what it'll actually be is is um, vertical, sort of from your tail to the lower back. And the legs as unengaged as we can keep them, so they're not kind of fighting and hovering and quivering. Okay, so a comfy sitting position with your hands in Linga Mudra. So the right thumb sticks up between a circle that's made by the left thumb and the left index finger. Eyes are closed. And take your focus inwards. One way to take your focus inwards is without tilting the head at all, is turn your eyes as if you were just looking down to your lower eyelids. Settling and breathing. And notice what distracts you. Notice if it's your body. Where is that distraction coming from in your body? Is it your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your back, your pelvis, your knees, your ankles? Being aware, absolutely fine as you sit, to make those tiny little movements and adjust to rearrange yourself in your sitting position to find comfort. Notice if you're distracted by thoughts, plans, lists, where we work, remembering things. What is it that you're remembering? Maybe actually taking the time for yourself to be on your mat will allow space later on. The mind will remember all these different things. It's a fantastic storage system. Those thoughts are still there. Those lists, those plans. Being in this moment. Simply noticing. So you've had a quick check through your body. It's being aware of anything that does feel tight or sore or injured and give yourself permission to move in the right way for you. After your next out breath, release the mudra that you're holding with your hands, give your fingers a little bit of a wiggle, move into your wrist and ease yourself from your sitting position to cat and have a little ease about in cat. As you ease in cat, can I get you to notice the tilting of your pelvis? So we can come to cat and, and kind of make the back go into its two opposite curves and we can coordinate the breath and that's great. So we want to do that as well. But I'd like you to notice that as you start to breathe in, 
you stick your little tail up to the ceiling, let that ripple go all the way down your spine for the length of your in-breath. As you finish your in-breath, you're reaching that point where the chest and the gaze are looking up and forwards. And then as you want to begin your out-breath, you tilt your pelvis the other way and tuck your tail as if you're tucking it between your legs. That ripple goes down the spine, finishes at the crown of the head, you end up looking down towards your knees. So for the whole of the in-breath, that tilting, the initial tilting of the pelvis sends a ripple down the spine for the whole of the in-breath and the same the other way around for the whole of the out-breath. Just really noticing that when you tilt your pelvis, if we just let the spine do what it wants to do, the ripple happens. So leading with the tilt of the pelvis. Check that you've got your wrists underneath your shoulders. In every direction, you want to have your wrists under your shoulders. So cat isn't where you've got your arms wider, your hands, your wrists are underneath your shoulders in every direction that somebody would be looking at you. If you push your index finger side of your hands into the mat, you'll turn the inside edge of your elbow to face one another. So we keep the elbow safe. We avoid having any hypermobility into the elbows that way. Brilliant. So starting to move your cat backwards and forwards. So as you breathe out next, then take your bottom back towards your heels, lower your elbows to the mat, keep your forearms on the mat, scoop yourself forwards and low, and then as you need to lift your elbows, lift them, but keep your body moving forwards as you straighten your arms. So once your arms are straight, your shoulders are very slightly further forwards in the mid part of your hand. Breathe out, take your bottom back towards your heels, lower your elbows. Breathe in, bring yourself forward, keeping your forearms down on the floor until that last moment where you want to straighten your arms slowly as you lift and come forwards. Keeping your forearms parallel. Keeping the body journeying forwards beyond your wrists as you straighten the arms. Keeping your elbows feeling like they're tucking in a little bit. So you notice the work in your upper arms. Brilliant. Next time you come to a flat back cat, so you've straightened your arms, just rest here for a moment, tuck your toes under, so walk your hands a little bit closer to your knees, take your bottom as close to your heels as your knees will let you, push your hands into the floor and lift your knees, put them back down, move your hands forward a centimetre, Push your hands into the floor, lift your knees, put your knees back down, move your hands a centimetre forwards, push your hands into the mat, lift your knees. Keep doing that until you find that place where you can keep your knees up, but you couldn't take your hands much further forwards. Okay? Next time, push your hands into the mat, the floor, lift your knees. And then take your head between your upper arms, push your bottom backwards and lift your bottom into the air. Use your thighs, don't readjust your feet. Bend your knees and take your tail to your heels. Take your bottom 
to your heels, keep your knees lifted. Take your bottom up, like you're opening the hinge joint of your knees, then close the hinge joint of your knees, keep your knees up from the floor. Two more of those, closing your hinge joint, opening your hinge joint, and keeping your knees from the floor. Knees don't come down to the floor. If your knees have to come down to the floor, you've taken your hands too far forwards to build the strength in your thighs. So bring the hands closer to your knees. Brilliant. And then make sure you ease. So next time your bottom comes down to your heels, come forwards to cat and tuck your toes and relax anywhere that feels comfy. You might need to move into your wrists. You might need to wiggle your toes about because they might be super crushed. Brilliant. Great way to build some strength into the thighs to power us up and down to get to dog. Come to sitting just for it or sitting in a place where you can see me just for a moment. We're going to have our blocks handy. You're going to come in a moment, just have a watch though, you're going to come to cat. You're going to come to that place where you can lift your knees and then take yourself up and stretch your back. Keep your knees bent, stretch your back. And then wander your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. Bring your feet close together, really bend your knees, super glue your abdomen to your thighs, take your block, angle it, and walk it to the upright. And we're working here, lifting the bottom. Notice my tummy doesn't come away from my thighs. I'm gazing at my fingers. I'm not dropping here. I'm lifting my upper back. I'm lifting my tail. When we come out of it, we'll come here and then we'll come up. Okay? So have your block handy, come to cat. Ease about in cat. Find that place where you can take the bottom all the way back to your heels and lift your knees. And then very slowly take your bottom backwards and upwards to get this lovely line in your back to dog. But keep your knees bent. And then when you're ready to wander your hands to your feet, your feet to your hands. and bend your knees deeply. You want to have your feet quite close together. You're bending your knees deeply and you're taking hold of the block. You're angling it away from you. And before you walk the block to the upright, bring the weight into the balls of your feet. Notice the block will move further away. Keep the weight in the balls of your feet and take the block to the upright. Lift your wrists and move them away from you. Keep your body thigh contact. Keep gazing at your fingers. Lift the spine between the shoulder blades. Gaze at the fingers and start to lift your tail upwards and backwards and backwards and upwards keep lifting your wrists keep lifting your spine between your shoulder blades and keep your body thigh contact if you're leaning too much into the block you've got weight in your toes find the weight in the balls of your feet try not to have too much weight in the heels of the feet Maintain that body thigh contact, looking at your fingers, lifting your spine between your shoulder blades. Fantastic. Breathe. 
working at taking the sit bone up and away behind you, working at lifting the spine between the shoulder blades. Lovely, super strengthening. So when you're ready to bend your knees a bit more, drop your bottom a little bit and let go of the block and bring your hands to your waist. And then come up to standing, take your time. Brilliant. I know that it gets tiring in your thighs, okay? So, can I just show you something? Because I'm just noticing a few things that are going on. First off, if you, if you lift yourself away from your thighs, you're curving in your back, okay? So all we're doing is kind of a forward bend, okay? What I'm after you doing is from this dog position here, where you get this lovely line in your back, we're trying to think about the tilting of the pelvis and getting a line in the back. So if we take the thigh and the body contact away, you're going to get a curve in your lower back. The other bit as well is this block, if it's this far away and you're leaning forward, you can't bring your hands to your waist to come out of this, and you can't keep body side contact. Your feet are about here. That's where you want to be. It's this position where you can absolutely control this and hold that stretch. Okay? So grab a hold of your block. Take hold of it with the top edge. Lower yourself down and have a little wiggle about and super glue your abdomen and your thighs together. Reach the block forward. So the weight is in the balls of your feet. It's not here in the balls of your feet. It's subtly in the balls of your feet. And then walk the block to the upright. Think about lifting your upper back but keeping your tummy super glued to your thighs and then lifting the sit bone up. And count to two and hold it here and work, breathe, move your tail up and then lower your bottom down and have a wiggle in the knees and then do it again and lift the sit bone up and then come back down. So absolutely fine to work like that. So absolutely fine to stay there for ages. Breathing. When you're looking ahead at your fingers, notice the back of your neck and lift your spine between your shoulder blades so you're not nipping the back of the neck. Fantastic. So this time, rather than coming up to standing, then wander your fingers to the floor in front of the block. Wander your fingers to near your feet. So from that stretch position, wander your hands in. So if your knees are okay, froggy squat and just ease here. If your knees are not okay from here, just come to a bit of a raggy doll. And then find yourself somewhere to be just again for a moment to watch. I'll show you very quickly, some of you have done this before, and I'll talk you into it more for anybody that hasn't done it so much before. We're going back to the same thing, but we're adding a twist. Okay, so I'll show you it from the side and from the front so you can see the twisting. So we're back here, we've got the block. You're going to keep your knees quite bent, bring your hand to the outside edge of your ankle and turn underneath and look to the ceiling. And then you work towards taking your tail up, body thigh contact, come back down and swap. And do the other side. Let me show you it from the other angle, just so you can see. It's quite low. And you turn and turn and turn and turn and lift, okay, and back down, and hand, and do the other side. 
Okay? You can hear it in my voice. It's strong. So you've got a forward bend. You've got work going on in your thighs and you're twisting. Take your time. These tiny, subtle little movements. Don't expect big things to happen. Kind of enjoy and work with the strength that you're building in your back and your thighs. So find that place that you've already been in, where you've got your knees quite bent, you've got your hands on the block, you've walked the block to the upright, you've got body thigh contact. Keep the knees quite bent. Put your left hand in the middle of your block, take your right hand and hold your left ankle and turn yourself underneath your armpit and have a little cheeky look up to the ceiling. Linda, turn the other way. That's it. Not, sorry, black top Linda, not pink top Linda. Brilliant. So the arm that's holding on the block, you're looking underneath that one. The hand that's wrapped around the ankle, you're using that arm to pull you underneath into the twist. You've got the arm on the block and you're working at turning right underneath that arm. Fantastic body thigh contact as much as you can and then start to take your little tail up to the ceiling and breathe. Don't be worried about whether you're doing it right or wrong. Don't be worried about what anybody else is doing. Feel it. Feel this lovely long line in your back, body thigh contact, and your tail moving away behind you and upwards a little bit. And when your body's just about to say, I wish you'd stop talking and let me come out of it, that's the point. Come out before that. It's absolutely fine. And come back with hands on the block. Catch your breath there, bend your knees a little bit more, stay in that place, breathe. Work with it. I know this is really hot. I know this is really powerful. We've got the other side to do and then you know it's over. So bring your right hand to the middle of the block. And then... It's your left arm reaching for your right ankle. Knees are quite bent. You're using the hand holding onto the ankle to draw you underneath that arm. Hold onto the ankle and then start to take your imaginary little tail upwards and backwards a little bit. Breathe. Find some lightness in the fingers on the blocks. Find some lightness. In the fact that your tail will come up and you've got balance down both those legs. Fantastic. To come out of it, turn back to centre, hands onto the block, then hands to the floor, wander your hands to your feet, froggy squat or raggy doll forward bend. Magic. Well done. I know it's really hot. But it's also wonderfully strengthening. Come back to cat and ease yourself in cat a little bit. So I'm just crossing off a few things based on how hot and tired we're getting. So from cat, can I get you then to come to high kneeling? Bring your right foot in front of you. Have a slope on your right shin. Turn your kneecap into a kind of movable part that just moves forwards and backwards that's the only thing that's happening move the kneecap forwards the whole of the rest of the body follows take it backwards again let's have a little explore of where this is all going brilliant 
So when the kneecap comes forwards, it doesn't shoot beyond your ankle. Lovely. And then the next time you push yourself backwards, swap legs. So you're coming forwards with your left. Slope on that shin. And travel your left kneecap backwards and forwards. Explore. So this gives us a chance to explore what's going on in the front of that leg that's behind us a little bit. Brilliant. Okay, and then push yourself backwards. So I'm going sideways again. Let's go um, to the right leg again, bring that foot through and travel your kneecap forwards and backwards. As you travel the kneecap backwards and forwards, keep your um, left knee to your shoulder in a line. So by that, I'm meaning lean forward. So all of that stays in a line and push back. Rather than lifting and having a big bowing in your lower back, I want to avoid anything happening in lower back. And that sense that we keep our natural curve. So just to know what I mean by a natural curve, when you come back to that upright position, put one of your hands into your lower back and feel your natural curve. Then take your kneecap forwards and keep that natural curve and then push back. So we get a sense of where the body needs to be in space to maintain the curve in your spine. Brilliant. Next time you push back, swap. Do it with the left leg, arm into the lower back, slope on that left shin. That's really important because when you're traveling the kneecap backwards and forwards, you don't want to travel the knee beyond the ankle. Maintain that lovely sense of your natural curve in your spine. It's your curve, okay? Whatever that is for you, it's your natural little curve in your lower back. Brilliant. And then push back. Bring your knees back together. Just hover there for a moment so that I can show you. We're coming forwards with the right foot slope. Bring that kneecap forwards. I'm maintaining that curve in my back because what I'm wanting to do is keep the spine in its kind of um, straight position, but with its curves, because then when I bring her hand down and turn, I'm keeping my back long and the turn feels nicer, and you come back to centre and push back, okay? So have a go with that to each side. Bring the right foot forward, slope on the shin, Keep the curve in your lower back, bring the kneecap forward. You might do it a couple of times backwards and forwards. You've got your right hand on your right kind of knee, thigh area. You're gonna bring your left hand down to the floor and as you bring the left hand down to the floor, turn a little bit with your chest and your shoulders towards the right. You get a lovely sense of easing because the spine is in its straight position. Straight as in the same position it would be if you were standing. Turn back to centre and then push into the floor with your foot to travel your kneecap back and back to your start position, swap sides. Left leg, slope on the shin, natural curve in your lower back. Travel your left kneecap forwards. Left hand onto the thigh, the knee. As you bring the right hand towards the floor, turn your body to the left. See that it's lovely turning in the spine. That feels quite happy to do that because we've got our spine in its standing alignment. Turn your body back to centre, push your foot into the floor and travel it back. Brilliant. So a quick watch, because it is just really hard to do in turn. So exactly the same thing, slope, travel forwards, lean, hands 
to Anjali Mudra, turn outside edge of that arm to the outside edge of the leg and a little bit more turning. So reverse turn in the spine. A little bit deeper, turn yourself back and then come back, okay? So same thing, but we just add that fraction more. I do it from the side as you're doing it, you can see. Right foot, slope. Curve in the lower back, bring the kneecap forwards. Hands to Anjali Mudra. Turn to the right and bring the outside edge of your left upper arm, elbow, to the outside edge of your right thigh. Hands together and you've got a little bit of turn there. Breathe. Draw your tummy button towards your spine as you breathe out and you get to turn a little bit more. Super. Turn yourself carefully back to centre and then push your foot into the floor to travel your kneecap back and swap sides. Left foot comes through. Slope. Natural curve. Kneecap travels forwards. Hands to Anjali Mudra. Turning to the left. Outside edge of the right arm to the outside edge of your left leg. Palms of the hands together. As you breathe out, draw your tummy button towards your spine to see how your spine wants to turn. Keep breathing. Super. When you're ready to come out of it, turn yourself gently back to centre. Push your foot into the floor to travel yourself back. Come to cat. And have a little ease of your back in cat. And again, notice that cat is a tilting action of the pelvis that sends a ripple down the spine. We're not slinging the back in its forward bend and back bend, simply trying to get our nose and our knees as close as we can or as far apart as we can. It's a lovely rippling action as you tilt the spine. Brilliant. Make sure you've got your wrists, your hands under your shoulders. Your arms are working very differently if you've got them a long way forwards or out to the side. You're using arm muscles very, very differently. Brilliant. So after your next in-breath, when you're looking up in cat, then wander your hands to your knees, come up to your high kneeling, step a foot forwards. So you can come up to standing. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit of a play with a posture called triangle. Okay. Um, many of you know I've got a bit of a thing about triangle in the way that perhaps it's written in some of the text because of how it might shear your spine. So before we do any sort of triangle stuff, Let's just take a big in-breath and take the arms up and an out-breath to bring the arms down. Breathe in, take the arms up and breathe out, bring the arms down. Just get a little bit of length in the body. Lovely. So take your feet wide apart. Bend your knees a little bit and have a little bit of easing about with your pelvis, just to find some softness into your ball and socket joints. Lovely. Okay, and then take your feet a little bit wider apart still. So if I can get you just to watch, I'm interested in the, the positioning of your feet for this one and how you can turn your pelvis. There's a lot of focus on the pelvis this evening. Okay, so I'm going sideways so you can see. This is where my feet are lined up. So if I turn in triangle and I turn a foot and I do this, then it's a little bit side bending, but the pelvis doesn't quite know what to do. Um, 
because it doesn't really have the space that it needs to turn. And if we've got very tight ball and socket joints, the place it's going to take it as a hit is either in your knees or actually in this delicate kind of two joints here where your spine comes down into your um, pelvis. Okay, so this is where the feet are traditionally. What I'd like you to do, we're going to do triangle to the right side first. So you step your left foot forwards and your right foot back slightly. So this is a bit of a weird one, okay? Because it feels a little bit peculiar. From here then you're going to turn your right foot out. So we've now got quite a lot of space to swing about and move the pelvis as we do our triangle, okay? So from the other way round, it looks like that, okay? So in triangle, the legs are straight. But notice you can really move your pelvis around, it's great. There's a lot of freedom. So we bring the arms up to shoulder height. So essentially, triangle is a side bend, but a lot of people will ask you to reach, which kind of shears your spine. I don't want you to do that. I'd like you simply to windmill your arms, one coming down to the inner thigh, and take the other arm up. So we don't go very far. Those of you that have gone a long way down, that's not what I'm asking you to do, come back up. So come back to this place here and only bend your spine, don't move anything else. Bend your spine slightly to the side, bring your right hand down to the inside of your thigh and take your other arm up. It's not a big bend, okay? If we're going to go any further than this, we've got to do something with the pelvis. Bring yourself back. So this time, I'm going to turn my bottom to you. Okay. So this time, uh, no, that's the wrong way around. This time, that's the right way around. We're here. So once we've got a little bit of a side bend here, which is where you all are now, what I'm after you doing is noticing your right buttock and push it away in space behind you, tilt the left side of your pelvis towards the floor and notice your right arm will come down your back a little bit further and what you're doing is rotating the spine and tilting the pelvis, not shearing the spine. Bend your right knee, lift your body up and you briefly come to warrior two and then straighten your right leg. Bring your arms down. We're going to do the feet the other way round. Okay? So we take the legs wide. You want to bring your right foot forwards, your left foot back slightly, and then pivot your left foot so that the toes point to the left. And then notice you've got all this space for the pelvis to do lovely things and not damage the knee and not damage the back of the pelvis. So the legs are straight, arms come up to shoulder height. We do a little bit of side bending to the left and all that happens is one arm goes up and one arm comes down. We're not going a long way at all. Take your awareness to your left buttock and move it away behind you as you tilt the right side of your pelvis forwards a little bit and notice your left hand will slide down that leg by simply tilting the pelvis. Right arms up in the air, left arm dangling down the left leg. Brilliant. Bend the left knee, drawing the arms back to shoulder height and you're briefly in warrior two and bring the arms down and move your feet and have a wiggle. So hopefully what you're not feeling is anything in here. We're going to have another go to each side. That's the kind of the staged way of getting into it. I'm just going to show you from the back again. So you went up here, okay, and as you move into triangle, basically your right buttock is driving towards and you can come into this kind of twist and then come back out of it. If I put my legs lined up, 
when I do it, the, the, the pelvis, it doesn't have anywhere to go. So then it's your knees and everything that's taking the hit. Whereas if you're wider apart, you've got so much more movement to come in and out of that safely with some twisting movement into your spine, uh, into your pelvis, okay? So come back to that leg position where you've got your legs apart. Brilliant. Take your left foot forward, your right foot a little bit back. So the tram line is here, okay? If I just put a marker, you end up with a line here, and your foot's either side of that, yeah? Pivot your right foot, arms come up. So you're going to side bend kind of to the right and drive your right sit bone away behind you and bring the crest of your left side of your pelvis forwards and notice you can come into a lovely triangle that feels a lot more like a spine twist. So notice your left foot, push the outside edge of your left foot into the floor. It'll want to roll onto the inside edge. Push the outside edge down, breathe, notice what's going on. Brilliant. To come out of this, it's a wonderful place then to bend the right knee, bring the arms back to shoulder height, so you come into a lovely warrior two with lots of freedom, and straighten the legs, bring the arms down. And then simply step your feet the other way. So your left foot comes back. Robin, Robin, can I just ask something? Where, yeah. where are you looking while you're doing this? Where's your head going? The same way that your chest is facing. Okay, thank you. So I'll just do it from this position. So when you're here, you end up turning, but because you turn your spine, you look in the same way as your chest. So it's incredibly similar, but you've got straight legs. It's incredibly similar to this kind of thing, but you've got straight legs, yeah? We, we are gonna do the reverse twist shortly, which is what you were doing earlier. So you need to do the other leg so that you've got your left foot further back than your right foot. And then you're pivoting your left foot, arms come up. So side bend to the left. As you side bend, drive your left sit bone away behind you, tilt the right side of your pelvis down towards the floor, and then turn the spine. So your spine actually ends up being in a twist. Push the outside edge of your right foot into the floor to protect your knee. When you're ready to come out of it, bend your left knee, arms to shoulder height, briefly into warrior two, and up you come. So what we end up with with triangle is something, something that feels quite light, something that feels um, like you're in control of it without sort of um, hanging on to your breath and, and sort of fighting with it. So that's triangle. We're going to have a little play now with reverse triangle. Okay, so reverse triangle simply means you're turning the spine the other way. Just very briefly, you've been here and this is where you've been going. So what you're going to end up doing this time, I'll just show you and then I'll talk you into it, is, whoa, balance, is your arms going to come down and you're going to come to a reverse triangle, okay? And then you can bring yourself back up. But what I want you to do is concentrate on the movement being led by the pelvis because it's really freeing and lovely. Can I get you to get your block though? Because I think reverse triangle, you need to have something to put your hands on. So sideways on with the block, okay? 
So we're going to go to the right. So if you put your right foot near the block, you can see I'm just hiding my foot behind the block. Your left foot comes forwards but out to the side. If you remember that position where you're kind of on a tram line that way round, that's the foot position. We were in it before and you're going to have the block. Now, if we turn this left pelvis, turn, 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 it all goes into that knee. So let's move the foot before we hurt the knee around, okay? So it's slightly different with the foot, but I really want you to protect your knee. We don't have that much movement in our pelvis and our spine, and we'll shear the knee, okay? So arms come up. So the start position is a little bit kind of weird. If I just show you from where you are now, you take your right arm down, your left arm up, your body turns, keep it turning, lead with the left side of the pelvis and keep it turning and moving the right buttock away and you come into your reverse triangle. Bring this arm onto your lower back and turn yourself background carefully, okay? So from this foot position, have your arms up. So to get there, we kind of windmill the arms. Right arm comes down on the right side of the body, left arm comes up. Swap them over so your left arm comes forwards. And as you lower the hand down to the block, take your right buttock away behind you and turn your left side of your pelvis and let it follow in that turn like you're moving the left side of your pelvis towards your right kneecap. And when you're ready to come out, right arm onto the lower back, bend the right knee and come back up and you can bring your arms a little bit. So kind of slightly weird warrior two, but that's okay. And bring your arms down. Unmute and ask a question if you want to. Thumbs up if you're all okay. It's very warming because we're twisting like crazy and using thighs. It's quite nice, quite nice to get quite warm. I'm going to go the other way. So if you were here before, so simply swap your legs around to be here. Okay. Yeah. Are we still trying to sort of stack the shoulders like you normally would? Yeah. Your shoulders are stuck, Judith, if you turn your pelvis. Okay. It's, it's really quite different. It's really quite differently successful to turn your pelvis. Okay. So we want to have the left foot slightly more as if it's behind you than your right foot. Block in next to your left foot, then know that we need to protect the right knee, so we're going to turn the toes in and the heel out a little bit. So the start position is a little bit weird, but it's the right place to end up for the knee to be safe. Arms come up. So what you're doing now is turning your chest towards the ball that's behind you. That's where it ends up looking, okay? So if you lower your left arm down, take your right arm up, and suddenly they turn a quarter turn. Take your left sit bone away behind you, your right side of your pelvis tilting it forwards and round. Your right hand comes down to the block, your left arm goes in the air. Keep turning the pelvis, and you get your arms stacked on top of one another, your shoulders stacked on top of one another. When you want to come out, left arm onto the lower back, bend the left knee, use the left leg to power yourself back briefly to a slightly weird warrior two leg position and come out. And ease a little high march. Brilliant. So 
a slightly different way to turn yourself with um, the reverse triangle by actually moving that action and coming from your pelvis. It's quite nice. We're going to revisit that again next week. But now we're super hot, we need to come back down. Maybe we've got a bit more movement in the ball and socket joint. So ease yourself down. You could come froggy squat all the way down and have a little wiggling froggy squat. If your knees don't like this, then a raggy doll forward bend. And by that, a little bit of softness in your knees and a dangle, maybe a little sway of the body. And then come back down to cat. Have an ease of the spine in cat. And then find a comfy sitting position. Come to the one you were in before, whichever one that was, and simply notice. Does everything feel slightly more happy to be in your sitting position? So settle yourself into a comfy sitting position. Have any supports that you want underneath. Anywhere at all. Hands back into Linga Mudra. So you're making a kind of double fist. You've got your left hand higher up than your right. So your left index finger is the finger that's on top, which allows you to make a circle with your left index finger and thumb and your right thumb sticks up. OK, this is the shape of Linga Mudra. And then you hold it somewhere just in front of your tummy. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, it's a little bit higher up. For me, I think it just depends where, where the body wants to be, okay? So if I rest my hands in front of my tummy, my arms are floating, maybe I'll just let my hands come a bit lower down so my um, lower arms rest on my thighs. Think about the crown of the head lengthening. Oh, closing your eyes, letting your shoulders settle away from your ears. Let's have a minute of focusing our attention on one single object, the object being our mudra. So simply noticing the connection of the fingerprints on the backs of the hands, noticing that contact, maintaining the mudra shape and allowing that contact that your fingerprints have with the back of each hand to be soft and light and be aware of each finger in turn touching the back of the hand and notice. After your next out breath, releasing your mudra, wiggling your fingers, easing yourself into your comfy relaxation position. Your back's worked quite hard. You're, you might quite like to have your legs up. Your back might really like that opportunity to be utterly flat. And with the legs up a wall or up onto a chair or a sofa or a bed, it allows the whole of your back to rest quite heavily and completely let go. Just notice the difference. It really is quite nice to take the legs up for a whole load of reasons. Inversions are wonderful for us. 
we take the legs into a completely different position in relation to our heart and our heart still beats and it's still moving blood around our body but it works differently in its relationship with gravity it kind of gives the heart just a little bit of time to do it differently a little bit of a not a rest because obviously it's still working but it's a different kind of way to work Have your arms in any comfy position they want to be in, eyes closed, and taking some time to be in your relaxation, letting your body soften and ease, and simply taking your awareness around your body using your out breath to let all the different points of contact that you have with the supports underneath you to soften and ease until you hear the sound of my voice again. Allow your focus to return to your physical body. Just noticing yourself in the position that you're in, where you are in your room, what's around you. Take your time to ease back gently and carefully. Know that it's absolutely fine to stay where you are for a little bit longer if that's where you want to be. 